Okay. So anyway, um, we have 12 different causes of vocal fatigue. There's, there's probably more if you, you know, think about some other things, uh, you know, that are kind of stretches on some of these. But the basic ones are smoking or drinking alcohol, um, which I'm sure none of you do. But um, that will seriously fatigue your voice. Smoking is very hard on the lungs, it's very hard on the vocal folds, it's just going to get you really tired really fast. Drinking alcohol is a problem as, as well as drinking caffeine because it dries you out. You need to drink so much water in order to counteract the effects that um, if you drink a lot of alcohol it's definitely going to give you some vocal fatigue. So in the, in the same vein of alcohol, it's also coffee and caffeinated tea. Yep. Pop, soda. Soda. All that good stuff. Soda. So we're not saying don't drink your coffee. Um, just if you're going to have a cup of coffee, you need to drink a glass of water. Um, unless you just want to be vocally fatigued, and then we're going to wonder why you don't sound as good. So um, it's better to just stay hydrated and avoid some of these problems. Um, belting, which is what some people on Broadway do, like if they're um, a belter or a mezzo-soprano, it's almost like like speak singing or yell singing. It's very, it's the chest voice, which I'm using right now to speak in. Um, but belting is when they try to push it up too high. So instead of switching over to head voice, they just keep going higher and higher and higher in their chest voice, and then eventually it gets very tight in here. Um, a tight solar plexus. David, do you want to explain this one? I have no idea what that is. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> um, the solar plexus is in here. If you've ever gotten like uh, the wind knocked out of you, or somebody you know hits you or something, or you um, or you're doing squats in a gym or something, um, the the muscle that you're you're usually holding tight, where you're holding your breath, is your solar plexus, and so if you're holding that really tight, that's going to give you vocal fatigue. Um, singing with a high larynx. We like to have our larynx comfortably low. Um, and so if you get your larynx really, really high or you do a lot of high tessitura singing without taking a break, your larynx is going to creep up and up and up and then pretty soon you're going to be fatigued. Um, on the other side of that, if you are singing with a low soft palate, so um, the soft palate is that uh, squishy part in the back. So if you have clean fingers, right behind your teeth you've got the hard palate, it feels hard. And uh, behind that you've got the squishy part, that's the soft palate, feels soft. Um, if that is low, it means that your, your throat is not really open as it should be. Because the soft palate should raise, like when you yawn. To its maximum. Um, it should be comfortably high, just like the larynx should be comfortably low. So, um, if you all yawn, your soft palate goes up, and it should stay in that nice, open, free space when you're singing. Um, good question. Now, if you sing with your jaw forward, this, um, people do this sometimes if they're trying to, like, sing higher. And they just think that if they push their mouth, their jaw forward and forward and forward, they're suddenly going to get these magical notes. Um, it doesn't help you, and it just makes you more tired, and it just clamps up your throat. So don't try to push your jaw forward to sing higher. It's not going to do you any good. Um, if you squeeze or overly widen the vocal cords, that's very much linked with the vibrato problems we've talked about. So if you try to like have a really, really fast vibrato, or you try to do the oh, 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 like vocal wobble type stuff, then you're going to get fatigued. We talked about that last week, or last time. Um, if you push too much breath through the larynx, so you take a big breath and you go, oh, oh, that sound is putting too much breath through the larynx. If you sing like that, you're going to be fatigued. <laughs> this sounded painful. That was a really good demonstration. <laughs> Thank you. I tried. Um, <laughs> If you have incorrect posture, so when we like to sing, we like to say, you know, feet shoulder width apart, whatever's comfortable, um, sort of like upright, and your spine should be naturally straight. So you don't want to see this, that's not good. You don't want this, that's not good either, because you're collapsing your chest cavity. 
So you need to have a very natural, comfortable posture. Um, moving on with that, if you sing with your head pushed forward, like this, and believe me, people do sing this way, or they try to, you're going to get really tired because all of a sudden you got like really tight in here. Um, so just remember, your head should be in line with your spine. Everything should feel comfortable. Um, unsupported singing or lack of a connection between your abdominal mus muscles and the breath. Um, if you just try to sing like you do when you're just talking, you know, not take a good breath, you're going to find that your lines are dipping into flat land all the time and you're not going to be able to make the same phrase as you normally would if you had a supported breath when you use your abdominal muscles. So that's something to avoid. Um, and then also overly exaggerated vowels. When you sing like this, that will get you very fatigued because it's not helpful at all. What it's doing is just kind of going like this on your vocal folds. And you're, I mean, having your, your teeth so open in a smile doesn't do anything except tighten you up in your teeth. Um, so we want to avoid that too. All right, any questions on these problems? No. Good. I'm glad you don't need any repeat demonstration. So, <laughs> um, oh, and another one that's not on there is just talking a lot. Um, if you talk all the time, uh, like I do, <laughs> um, especially if you speak in the low tessitura, um, I'm speaking around an A flat right now. That's that's where I'm speaking, and I don't even sing A flats and A naturals. So um, I really should be speaking more up here in my head voice because that would be healthier. So just so you know, if you feel tired and you haven't done any of those, but you've been talking a lot, that's probably why. Now let's talk a little bit about your resonators. This is where the sound actually resonates in. And there are, technically there are six different places the sound can resonate. Most people only mention five. So, um, the chest cavity. That's kind of self-explanatory. We, we breathe and everything gets started in the lungs. Um, when you talk, you can feel the vibration. So everybody just kind of say something to themselves or hum or something and you can feel this vibration in your chest cavity. Do you feel that? Yeah? Okay, so that's resonator number one. Resonator number dos is the tracheal tree, which um, is basically the trachea and the bronchial tubes, which go up, and they're right underneath the larynx. And that's, um, it's not as uh, easy to explain because you can't really feel them. Um, you can feel the larynx, however. You can feel your voice box resonate. You can feel the vibrations in there. You can feel that in your throat as well, you know, right by your Adam's apple. You can feel um, in your pharynx that resonation. Um, and if we refer to the pharynx, it's, it's kind of, it's the throat, but that's the, that's the layman's terms. Um, then we've got the oral cavity or the mouth. Um, that's a big, a big place where the sound resonates because it's got all this crud to bounce off of. It's got your hard palate, your soft palate, your teeth, your tongue, your, your cheeks, your lips. It's got everything to bounce off of. So um, the oral cavity is a huge, hugely important resonator. Then lastly, we've got the nasal cavity and sinuses. Um, if you sing mm or any N or M or NG sound, you're going to feel the resonation up here in your sinuses and, and probably down into the, um, your sinus cavities. So... Um, those are the resonators, that's where the sound will resonate. If you are singing and you are not feeling um, resonation or, or the sound is kind of sounding dead, it's just not getting anywhere, you're probably not using all your resonators or, or it's probably getting stuck somewhere. Maybe your pharynx isn't open enough and so the sound isn't able to really resonate. Anybody have any questions on that? Yeah? Well, all of our resonators aren't working, how do we actually get them to work? Good question. So, well, the, we can't exactly control what, um, like, the tracheal tree is doing. Uh, it's just, it's basically the tubes that connect the lungs up and it's connected to the larynx. Um, but you can definitely control the oral cavity by changing the shape inside your mouth. 
You can control the pharynx or the throat by releasing tension, um, using a good supported breath so that you don't have to try to form any sounds in the throat or, or to try to push sound through the larynx or the pharynx. That um, momentum should come from your abdominal muscles giving you the support behind the breath. So that's one way to control sort of um, how open the pharynx is. And you can control where you place sound. So if you're seeing everything like this, it's very nasal and it's very resonant in the nasal cavities, but it's not very resonant in the mouth. Um, and so, you know, you can try to switch vowels. Maybe instead of going e you can feel the difference between going nasal and then going a little bit darker, more resonant in the you know, back of the throat. Um, so we like to get a combination of, of all of these. We don't want somebody to sing really, really nasal, really, really bright. We also don't want somebody to sing really, really dark or really, really covered. We need to use these resonators combined to produce the most beautiful sound. Um, and when you produce that sound, it's called the singer's formant. And um, it's actually a, a frequency in hertz that you don't have to know it, but um, it's that ping that you hear. If you ever hear a singer and they just have a ringing sound and it just carries to the back of the hall, they're probably using the singer's formant, and it's where um, the vibrations in hertz go. And the, um, what's it called? The uh, harmonic... Harmonic overtones. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it has to do with the overtones. Okay, any other questionators on resonators? Questions on resonators? Okay, now let's just briefly talk about the articulators. And these are where, can I erase this? Everybody have this? Okay. Um, the articulators are what we, at, what we use to actually phonate or actually make sound. Um, you, you need these things to produce different sounds. If you didn't have all of them, you would be limited in the sounds you could produce. So we need to have our lips. They help us with sounds. Tongue. Jaw. Teeth. You wouldn't even be able to say the word teeth if you didn't have teeth. Um, interesting enough. And the soft palate, the squishy part in the back that raises. The hard palate. Um, we actually use the hard palate a lot in our speech, regular speech. You probably don't realize it, but your tongue is going up and it's going up all the time and touching the hard palate. Um, all right, so those are the six. Um, these are articulators. Can we do examples for when we use each one? Sure, why don't you give us some examples? Okay. Um, well, why don't you guys think of examples? So what are examples of when you use your tongue? Or wait, we, we started with lips. What's your lips? When you sing an ooh. Ooh, yeah, good one. Something else? Or an N. Mm, yeah. Yep. Anything else? What about a W? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those are good examples. Does everybody have that? It, it might come on your show up on your quiz. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and how about your tongue? Someone who hasn't answered yet. Wait. Oh. Jaw. You're not sure? That's okay. Karen? This is the jaw, the, that part. <laughs> Come, yeah, you can think about it. What? Just 
try it. Make a guess. Ah, uh, exactly. Yeah, ah's uh, a good one. Try to say ah uh, with your mouth closed. Oh. Oh. It doesn't really come out as ah. Uh. Yeah. Jane, do you have another suggestion? Ow. Ow. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. That one might come back. Oh no, we already did this. <laughs> um, teeth. Anybody have any other suggestions for teeth? Jim? Well, we have well. Hung in English, like hungover. Huh. <laughs> Which you shouldn't be because you're not drinking, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, good. So let's move on. We don't have all that much time left. So good job looking at the articulators. Today we're going to take a look at a duet that um, Haran and Kimmy have been working on, hopefully. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, what, what's going to happen is they're going to sing it once all the way through and then you guys are going to make comments and try to keep your comments as positive but um, as helpful as possible. So if you think that they did something really well, say, oh, I really liked that you crescendoed here, but um, maybe you could make your piano softer. So try to think of something positive and something constructive to say. And then we'll run it through again, and, and David and I will make comments and try to help them along with that. So, ladies, do you want to come by the piano? And you need an extra? Do you have a copy? I do. Okay. Can we? Do you need a copy? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to play? Oh, sure. <laughs> I, I just don't know at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll play. Do you want me to play with you? Something you like and something that you think they could work on. 
besides being nervous. <laughs> I think they did a really good job at keeping on going. That was really good. And I think they work on. Oh, and I also really like the dynamics. I can tell there was dynamics. Um, something to work on. I think just knowing the intervals would be really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Jim? Think of something good and something to work on. I have no idea. Well, what did you like? You you just heard a performance, and, and what do you think when you just heard that? What's the first thought that comes in your mind? Um, Nobody's going to yell at you. There's no wrong answer. <laughs> What? Dynamics? Good. Like good dynamics or more dynamics? Good. Good? Okay. Mariko? Um, I like how I could tell where the peak was. Mm -hmm. So the, I guess, like, I guess yeah, dynamics like I mean. Yeah, with the, the climax of the piece. Yeah, That's yeah. great. Great. I couldn't hear one of the voices. So. That's a very good point. Excellent, excellent comment. Thank you. Jane? Um, yeah, I like the, the dynamics too. And when we have a really high part, mm -hmm. I think um, she better not push much. Yeah. Have you ever heard that before, Harn? About pushing in the high register? <laughs> Maybe. Good comment. Thank you. And I mean, this part. So you've got these crunchy parts um, that make it difficult to tune. So why don't we try it again? And um, do you want me to just play both parts? Okay. <laughs> um, I'll turn pages. Okay, excellent. All right, here you go, ladies. Here's your beginning.
lot of syncopation in this song, or it's not actually, it feels syncopated. So, just try it one more time. Make sure that you're counting. or studio classes where you um, display what you've been working on. And towards the end of the semester, we'll be showing what you've worked on in your, in your individual lessons, um, working on your solo piece. But throughout the semester, it's fun to be able to collaborate with our colleagues and, and do some duets and do some trios. Um, so I've got three pieces of music up here. And um, one of them is a three-part round. So I think we can all take a copy and look at it. But if there are three of you that especially like it and, you know, you want to make this your project or this you want to do as a trio in class, I think that would be absolutely wonderful. So why don't you all come up here quickly and just grab um, one of each pile and this uh, thing on articulators and resonators. Get one of each, yeah. please? Okay, great. All right, so 
Um, the three part round is it's kind of a simplistic melody, but it's actually kind of lovely. Um, this for you. Um, so this is what it sounds like. thinking about bells. Um, so that's one option. And then we have a traditional American spiritual song that is just, it's very popular, it's very beautiful, um, and it is written for four parts, but it could easily be a soprano alto duet, uh, which would be lovely, I think. So that's... melody is often used as a hymn, um, and so this is another good option. This could even be a quartet if you like. Alright, so um, let's just decide this right now while we're all still here. We've got like 30 seconds. So by a show of hands, who wants to do the three-part round? Well, you, Har, and Kumi, okay? And Catherine. All right, so you guys already have something. So were you and Catherine, and we need a third person. Oh, I wasn't reading my Oh, you weren't? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's great. So were you, Har, and, and Kumi, you guys will do the three-part round. Okay? Um, who wants to do a poor wayfaring stranger? Oh. Yeah? Great. Catherine, and do you want to do the alto part, Jan? On the, which one? Okay, do you guys want to do all through the night? Perfect. Um, Jane, do you want to do the poor boyfriend and stranger with Catherine? Which one? I don't know. The title Okay, excellent. So Catherine and Jane, you guys will do that, and then... You guys in Santiago, is that okay if you do all through the night? Yeah. I'm willing to do that? Okay, so excellent. Santiago, Mariko, and uh, Gian will do all through the night. Okay, so your teachers will be giving you um, some time looking at these, but this is going to be um, largely of your own practicing. So we will spend a little time in lessons. We don't just want to throw it at you, but um, obviously the most important thing for you to work on in your lessons is um, getting prepared for the final song that you sing. So, okay, any questions? No? What? Oh, makeup class. Yes. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about that. Um, oh, we'll send out an email. In the email that we send out the performance reviews, we'll send out options for makeup class. Okay? Okay. All right, good job, you guys. Okay. Oh, and Catherine, this no. is for you. Because they don't have <laughs> Okay. All right, good class, guys. Okay. Can I stay here and practice? Yeah. I think so. I'm, if the room's I'm free, I'm sure you can. Thursday. 